So hello from Green Mopeds in South West London. So today we're going to compare uh, three bikes. Uh, we're mostly talking about this one, which is the Lexmoto LX08, also known as uh, Lueng LX08. And we're comparing it to a Sunro Robo S and an NIU MQI GT Model 45. Uh, the reason we've got these two here um, are that they're all basically about the same price of £3,200. Obviously there are other bikes available and we'll highlight some of those as we go around. But as these are all pretty much in the same ballpark from a cost perspective, we thought we'd compare them. So uh, we'll do what we normally do and go around the bikes, talk about them, show you some of the features and hopefully that will help you make an informed decision. So let's get to it. Okay, so just to start at the beginning, obviously these are all out of China. Uh, NIU on the right, uh, Lueng or L-V-E-N-G in the middle and then Sunra on the left. Okay. Um, this is the MQI GT Model 45, so this is the 45 mile an hour version. Uh, the Lexmoto LX08 is a 45 mile an hour bike. Uh, the Sunra Robo S gets a bit more, yeah, that's 50 miles an hour. Okay, but as I said, um, these bikes are all 3,200 thereabouts. Um, a little bit more for the Robo, but nothing that would uh, make any difference. Obviously, there are other bikes available that are more powerful. Uh, but essentially uh, they would bore down to something like those two in the back, the black one which is the EK3 from Horwin and the Supersoco CPX. So Supersoco is 56 miles an hour and the Horwin EK3 is 62 miles an hour. But obviously um, they're 3,800 and 4,099 for the Horwin. So that's why we're sort of excluding them. But uh, you know, if you want to spend more then you can obviously uh, look at those bikes and we do have reviews on them. Okay, so starting at the front. So as you can see from the fronts, um, one thing to notice is that all of them have the uh, main beam in the body. Okay, so um, not in the headlight, uh, in the handlebars. Okay, so that basically means that um, the lights are gonna point in the direction of the body and not where you might be turning into. Okay, not a problem per se, but that's just the way uh, they've chosen to do it. Um, in addition, both the LX08 and the NIU have their indicators on the handlebars, which means the opposite. The indicators turn in the direction that you're turning your handlebars, not in the direction that you're pointing, i.e. in the direction where the cars that are coming towards you might be uh, on the Robo there down here. Okay, again, not a problem, just the way they've chosen to do it. Okay, um, design's all fairly similar, sort of square looking. Um, when we come down to the wheels, so, one of the first differences is that NIU have chosen 14 inch wheels and the other two have chosen 12. These are all 125cc licenses, so all L3Es, which means 17 year old or CBT or greater. But what you'll notice or what you might think is that if you look at these two, you'll think, oh, okay, the Robo has actually got smaller wheels. It doesn't actually have smaller wheels, it's just a smaller profile on the tyre. So the profile on the tyre of the LX08 is 120 and the profile on the Robo is 110. Okay, so that would be why there's a difference there. Often they say the bigger the wheel, the um, more stable they are over bumps and potholes and things like that, okay? But um, 12 inch to 14 inch probably doesn't make a lot of difference to be honest, okay? In terms of actual uh, dimensions, um, if we sort of go down the bike here, you will actually see that the MQI has got the highest seat and what appears to be, if you can tell from this, the longest seat. Okay, but um, what actually you should note is that, and we pointed this out on the uh, review of the MQI, this bit isn't actually usable. Okay, so if you compare that, then for the passenger at least, I would say that the, Sun, uh, the uh, LX08 has the most seat available for the passenger but the MQI GT has the most seat available for the rider. Okay, so uh, something to bear in mind. Okay, as we're back here, just talk a little bit about the motors. So the Sunra has got its own motor, which is three kilowatts, whereas the other two have gone for Bosch. Okay, so um, this is a 3.1 kilowatt Bosch motor on the NIU and a four kilowatt one on the uh, LX08. Okay, so more powerful, therefore um, more acceleration, I would say. But that goes hand in hand with the batteries that they're talking to. Okay, so um, when it comes to acceleration, 
uh, what you often find is the higher the rated battery in terms of volts, the more acceleration you feel. Okay, so on these two, um, we've got 72 volts on the Robo, okay, and then you've got 60 volts on the LX08 and 48 volts on the NIU. Okay, so if you actually rode these bikes and you did sort of a speed test or uh, testing the acceleration, what you'll probably find is that the Robo would appear to accelerate more or more quickly. So if it's acceleration you want, getting away from the lights, what have you, then the Robo might be the one that you go to merely by the fact that it's got 72 volt batteries, okay, versus 60 versus 48, okay. And as we said, in terms of speed, uh, the Robo will have the fastest speed at 50, and then these two are about the same, okay, about 45 miles an hour, okay. So that's that. <coughs> the next thing is obviously talk about batteries. So one of the key things about Robo is that the batteries are under the floor, so you therefore get 24 litres of space under the seat, okay, which um, I won't show you, but uh, take my word for it. Um, on the MQI, you get two batteries. Um, this is actually the ER version. This is 48 volt, 42 amp hours. On the standard range, which is what we should be comparing, it's 31 amp hours, okay. Um, but anyway, by the by, uh, you then also underneath here do have space for the charger, which is uh, a, a good move because uh, you weren't able to, able to do that on any of the other bikes. OK, so you can actually take your charger with you. OK, whereas on the LX08, um, you have 60 volt batteries under the floor, under the seat um, and not a lot of storage for anything. As you can see from the charger, that charger will not fit underneath there. So here you're reliant on a rack. OK, um, you will probably end up with a rack on the MQI GT anyway. Um, it's, that's normally how it works because most people want to store a helmet. OK, so um, when we come to batteries, it is, let's say this is the 31 amp hour standard version. OK, on the uh, Robo S, we have 20 amp hours, two of those. And on the LX08, we have 32 amp hours, 60 volts. So this uh, brings up another interesting subject in itself, in as much when you talk about uh, potential range or total capacity of the battery. Okay, so what I mean by that is um, if you were comparing this to, uh, say, a petrol car, um, how much juice do you actually have in the tank, I guess, is what, uh, what we're coming to. And the way you calculate that is you work it out based upon the um, volts times the amp hours. Okay, so if you have, for example, um, 60 volt by 30, uh, sorry, 60 volt by, um, by 32 amp hours, Okay, if you do the maths on that, so 60 by 32 by 2, you get 3.8 kilowatt hours of energy. Okay, so that's in those batteries, that's what you get. Okay, so 3.8 kilowatts. If you do the maths on these batteries, it is 72 volt times 20 amp hours times 2, and that equals 2.8 kilowatt hours. Okay, so there's one kilowatt hour more in a LX08. Okay. If you do the maths on the standard range of this bike, you get 31 amp hours times 48 times two, and that gives you 2.97 kilowatt hours. So in other words, the capacity of the batteries is the greatest in the LX08. And therefore, if all things were equal, just doing the maths, if all things were equal, you would expect about 20% more range out of the LX08 than you would out of the MQI GT and about 25% more out of the Robo, okay? Merely because there's more battery capacity in those batteries, okay? But obviously all things are not equal because they've got different powered motors, okay? So the LX08 has got uh, four kilowatts, MQI and the uh, Robo S have got about three kilowatts. So what that translates to is the range, quoted range on the standard range MQI GT is about 46, so about 20, 22 per battery. The quoted range on the um, Robo S 
It's quoted at 80, but that's a bit unrealistic. More likely 60. Um, and then the quoted range on the uh, LX08 uh, is about 50. Okay, this is sort of my more realistic ranges than actually what is quoted on the spec sheet. Okay, so on paper, what they're saying is they reckon the Robo S has got more range, but I think the reality is it's actually the LX08, merely by looking at the maths. Okay, as I said, this has got less available capacity than this and this. In fact, it's the least capacity. Okay, so um, obviously uh, if you did a range test, you'd probably uh, find that out. Okay, so probably usable range would be the LX08 uh, at, in terms of the most, uh, I would say 50 to 60. Then you'd get uh, the Rob OS and then you'd get the uh, MQI, M MQI GT standard range. Obviously, if you went for the extended range, then you should get that those two positions between the Sunra and the uh, M series should change. Okay, should actually flip. Okay, in terms of chargers, um, they come with different chargers. Uh, so this one, five amp, sorry, five amp in, 10 amp out. Okay, so it's a 10 amp charger. Uh, this one is five amp, right? Um, when you come to the MQI, you will um, be a little bit surprised <laughs> because on here it says output 26 amp. Okay, um, that does not mean you get 26 amp. <laughs> it means they have the potential of getting 26 amps, but what they actually do is if you plug it into one battery, you get 11 amps. If you plug both batteries in together, you get 9 amps on the second one. Okay, um, the MQI is the only one that can charge both batteries off the bike together. Okay, the others, you will need another charger. So you could say you have to add on a couple of hundred quid onto the other bikes to make it comparable in terms of charging ability to the NIU. Okay, but as you see, one of the ways to charge the bike is through this little port here, which they have. Okay, on the MQI GT, it's under the seat. Um, and therefore you can charge both bikes on both batteries on the bike together okay um, if you did that you're talking about five to six hours for these two and you're talking about three and a half to four hours for the mqi gt okay so if it's charging time that's your concern then it'd be niu okay all right that's that um talking a little bit about the dashboards so this is the layout of the Robo. So you've got two batteries here, speed, full beam. There is actually uh, quite an interesting little uh, petrol gauge if you've only got one charger plug, uh, one battery plugged in. So the way it works on this bike is that you have uh, cyclical modes, which means that the modes here go three, one, two, three, okay? Um, so you have to go through the, the actual sequence. And then as you can see, it sort of winds itself up um, it says 60, but obviously when you put people on it, it's not going to be doing 60, okay? Okay, uh, all of these bikes have CBS, uh, which is a requirement of uh, 125cc bikes. So they're all having a uh, front and back brake together and, uh, on that lever. So you've got interesting things around here like a reverse gear, um, not that you would probably ever use it. Um, you have obviously hazards, a horn, and then your lights, etc., etc. This bike also has fingerprint, so we'll talk about that a bit more when we talk about the app. But you do have storage, and you do have a USB port down there. Okay. On the LX08, you have a more simple display, as you can see. You've just got your two battery things there. Your total—that's your total mileage, and that's your trip. Uh, you just change modes here very simply and you can go, you know, either way, you don't, it's not cyclical. And then you've got your power button here, which once you press that and come out of, um, uh, as you can see, it sort of gets there pretty quickly. Okay. Okay. Um, and then you've got standard stuff, horn, indicators, which are silent, as are they are on the uh, Rob OS and then your lights. Here you can see the cylinders for your brake fluid. Also have a cubby hole, and in there you have a USB port. Okay, so that's that. On the uh, MQI GT, 
Uh, one of the first things to note is that you don't start the bike with the key, as in key fob, uh, key lock. You only start it with the fob itself. That key is only to undo the seat. Uh, no storage, um, which is interesting. Uh, here you have uh, different ways of actually engaging the throttle. So here you've got this button here that turns the whole bike off, um, as in no, nothing's active. Um, so you have to enable it and then you have to put it into ready. Uh, haven't really got a good answer as to why they need to do it twice, but anyway, there you go. Here you've got your modes that go up and down. Okay, so not cyclical, uh, but up and down. Okay, and then when the ready light is on, you can just engage, and there you go, 53. Okay, again, before there's a load put on it. Um, this one has got uh, noise indicators, and they do self-cancel, okay, which is actually quite an interest, a useful feature. It's also got cruise control, which the others don't have. Okay but said no storage, but you do have a uh, bag hook and a uh, USB port. Okay. All right, so other things to talk about are things like an app. So both the Sunra and the uh, MQI have an app, but on this one, it's for features and not for things like tracking or checking. Okay, so on their app, you can register your finger, fingerprint, fingerprint, for fingerprint recognition. Um, you can open the, the seat with it, you can start the bike with it, um, but there is no sort of tracking per se. On the LX08, there is no app at all. So um, uh, that's the way that is with that. And on this one, it's about tracking and uh, checking the bike. Okay, so if someone rides off with the uh, MQI, they can actually be tracked through the app. And we have had customers who've actually successfully done that and uh, found their bike after it's been stolen. Obviously you can add that to uh, any of these bikes. You can add a tracking capability to any, any of the bikes. So we have customers who've done that, but with the NIU it obviously comes as standard. It also enables you to update the firmware on the bike. Okay, so if there's fixes for the software or improvements that they've done, then you can actually get that over the air. Okay, so that's something there. In terms of colors, um, the NIU is, M, uh, is black, white, grey. Uh, the Sun, uh, Sunra is black or white. And then on the Lexmoto, it's red or white. Um, they're all on the grant, so they all get the £500 off. As I said, they're all, well, £3,200 for the first two, and £3,300 for the Robo S. Okay. But in summary, um, the most powerful one on paper is the LX08. The fastest one on paper, it, well, not on paper, is the Sunra. Um, the one with the most range, if we're comparing the standard range M to these two, on paper they're saying the Sunra, but I actually believe it to be the LX08. Okay. Um, so hopefully that's uh, answered all of the possible questions you might have. Oh, other than one thing. Uh, which I almost forgot. Uh, one of the things that happens when you buy one of these bikes is you might think about your uh, knees. So when you sit on a bike like this, for example, as you can see, there is space, and that's because it's on 14-inch wheels, okay? That's why they got away with that. On this one, um, I'm on 12-inch wheels, but I also have the same amount of space. And the reason they've done, that happens is because they've thought about it and put a kink on the handlebars, okay? Um, on the Robo, uh, because it's on the smallest wheels, you potentially have that issue, okay? So that might be something to consider. So I'm six foot one, so um, uh, for me, uh, that might be a bit of an issue. And uh, you might see that quite clearly if you actually look at the handlebars. Look how high the handlebars of the LX08 are compared to the others. Okay, and look how high the mirrors are. Okay, so you can clearly see that the kink in the handlebars has made quite a lot of difference. Okay. 
All right, so um, I think that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at hello at green-mopeds.com. If you have any uh, requests for a test ride, then just please let us know and we can organise that. And hopefully that's been useful and thanks very much. Mm -hmm.